Demon Hunters might be back on the menu thanks to some big damage buffs. Meanwhile, Holy Paladin's got a blessing of might directly from Blizzard. And does anyone know where the Marks Hunter nerfs went? Because we couldn't find them. But folks, we might have a more serious problem on our hands. The return of Flavor of the Month rerollers means more players running around having no idea how to play their spec. And if you encounter a Demon Hunter reroller in the wild, don't panic. Instead, send them to our new add-ons page, where they can learn how our UI can increase their damage and awareness in Arena with just the click of a button. Skill cap members can unlock every feature of the best UI ever for PvP and get instant access to exclusive guides that were made alongside the world's best players. From maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech, everything is covered. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee anyone can gain at least 400 rating or get a full refund. So why wait? Click the link in the description below and join SkillCap today. Let's kick things off with the biggest changes happening on the melee side. DK saw some tuning for the second week in a row with a class-wide nerf to another one of their hero talents, while Unholy was targeted by a nerf to Doom Burst, which is one of their hard-locked PvP talents, and as the name suggests, is a nerf to their burst. Overall though, we don't think this will have any immediate impact on their relative strength in solo shuffle. While they might be missing some finishing power, Unholy DKs will continue to have one of the highest win rates in solo shuffle across all ratings, while being the bane of any poor caster in their lobby. The Demon Hunter changes are where things get interesting. Last update, we mentioned that Demon Hunters needed some damage buffs in order to be competitive, and that's exactly what they're getting this week. Multiple rotational abilities were buffed by 10%, which might not seem like much on paper, but we think these will probably be enough to bump DH back up to the high tiers. Havoc is one of those specs that scales really well with bigger numbers. I mean, think about it, the DH toolkit is more or less the same as it was in previous expansions. When Demon Hunters are doing big damage, you definitely feel it. So for those of you who re-rolled after the Dragonflight rework, it's time to dust off the old DH. Another spec moving up this week is Feral Druid, who we now think is deserving of the a tier. While Feral is seeing nerfs to burst damage, both of their main bleeds are getting some fairly big buffs. Now, we know that last week we hesitated on moving Feral Druid up half a tier, but we can't deny that they are one of the most powerful melee, especially at higher MMR. After back-to-back -back buffs, they're definitely going to see gains across all ratings. One of the weirdest changes this week was a nerf to Reverberation for Sub Rogue, which is a talent that virtually nobody plays. To make sure you're setting up your character properly, be sure to check out our free articles site after this, which even include BIS lists, macros, and more. Anyway, that brings us to our updated melee tier list, and before you freak out, let's explain the A-plus tier. At higher ratings, Sub Rogues and Feral Druids are doing really well. In the hands of a player like Waz or Peekaboo, Sub is easily an S-tier spec, and Feral might be too, but for the average player, these specs might be a bit underwhelming, since they have much higher skill floors compared to something like a Fury Warrior. That's why, despite being arguably stronger, there are less Sub Rogues on representation charts compared to other high-tier melee. So even though Sub is S-tier at the top of the ladder, it's going to be moderately weaker for everyone else. The ranged meta will be shuffling around this week too, so let's break things down. Remember that 10% buff Devastation of Ochres got last week to Eternity Surge? Well, it's now been disintegrated by an even stronger nerf. Will this affect their rankings? We don't think so. Evoker damage will still feel really good, all things considered, and the damage alone isn't what makes Dev feel OP. This spec is remarkably tanky and now even more mobile than ever thanks to the Slipstream hero talent, allowing them to reset hover after every deep breath. They are like mages in disguise. As you should know by now, being able to avoid damage is incredibly important in solo shuffle and evokers definitely check that box. Moving on, last week BM got a huge list of damage buffs, and this week they got even more for some reason. Probably PvE or something. Anyway, we're sticking to our original prediction that BM is a high tier spec, and if you're wondering why they might be underperforming in your lobbies, the answer might simply be gear of all things, since most hunters probably itemized for marks so far this season. Anyway, moving on, every mage spec is seeing changes this week. Arcane is getting some pretty big damage buffs at the cost of a nerf to some of their burst. This is a bit tricky. The fundamental problem with Arcane Mage right now is that so much of its damage is tied into hard casting. If you could simply sit there turreting the recently buffed Arcane Blast, you would have a great time, feeling like a high tier spec, but that's not the reality we live in. Arcane Mages get shut down a bit too easily and have a steep enough learning curve to make these buffs seem less significant than they should be. 
Fire is experiencing a similar problem. It's getting some more damage buffs this week, especially to Fireball, but this might not matter much. Fireball used to be good when Flame Accelerant actually buffed its damage instead of just reducing its cast time like it does now. And good luck trying to cast multiple Fireballs in people's faces. What hurt Fire the most this expansion was the fact that Flame Cannon forgot to press Ice Block, which means mages are running around with less HP in a meta dominated by Mark's Hunters. So despite some buffs, we don't expect Fire to suddenly see a resurgence. That leaves Frost as the best mage spec for the third week in a row, but possibly weaker than before after even more Ice Lance nerfs, which came with buffs to casted damage. But once again, this isn't necessarily a win since casting can be severely limited in real arena games. If mages were simply allowed to free cast all game, these Frostbolt buffs would be a godsend, but that's just not how most solo shuffle lobbies go. With Mark's Hunters being the most popular ranged DPS, Frost Mages are going to be missing those juicy Ice Lances. And this might seem like a hot take, but we are expecting them to feel at least half a tier weaker. Finally, the last spec to see changes for ranged DPS is Shadow Priest, who got yet another flat damage buff, combined with a 10% nerf to one of their best Archon PvP talents. For the meantime, we will be keeping Shadow on the A tier. While the Archon nerf will hurt their finishing power in Solo Shuffle, Shadow is more of a support spec than anything else and has enough utility to carry games without needing to rely exclusively on big damage. That brings us to our updated range DPS tier list, and would you look at that, Mark's Hunter has moved up. After nerfs to some of the other high tiers, and after dodging nerfs for the second week in a row, Mark's Hunters are looking pretty good. They're doing amazing damage and are now actually quite tanky. To wrap things up, the healer meta is where things really start to get spicy. After last week's monumental 3% healing increase, Mistweaver Monks are getting a 20% buff to Enveloping Mist and Vivify. We will be moving Mistweaver up a tier, but with one huge disclaimer. While these do seem like big numbers, this buff mathematically equates to a 5-10% to overall healing increase in most games, which is definitely good, but won't fix the bigger problems Mistweaver faces. There's a really good chance that they will continue being the worst healer in Solo Shuffle. Now, as far as the best healer in Solo Shuffle is concerned, Disc Priest is getting a nerf to one of its Power Word Shield modifiers, but we still expect it to be one of the best healers. Holy, on the other hand, is getting massive 40% buffs to both Serenity and Sanctify, which we think are enough to pull it up at least one tier for now. What you have to remember is that anytime Holy Priests get buffs to their direct healing spells, it also means a buff to their mastery. Bigger Serenities mean bigger Mastery Hots, which should help the spec feel more fluid in Arena. The biggest winner this week is definitely Holy Paladin. Last week we said that Holy's biggest problems are healing output and mana regen, and what do you know, Blizzard has sent an Amazon Prime delivery with exactly the buffs Paladins needed. This might be a hot take, but we think that Paladin could be one of the best healers, jumping all the way up to the A-plus tier. According to the current data, Holy Paladins had the second highest win rate of any healer across all ratings, and this is before this week's buffs. Right now, the meta seems to be good for Paladins, with Mark's Hunters, Fury Warriors, Feral Druids, and all these rogues running around. Pallies are definitely in the conversation for top three meta healers across all ratings. That brings us to our updated healer tier list, with half of the cast moving up in rankings from last week. We've moved Preservation back up to the S tier to join Disc, while last week's nerf to Prez might have put a dent in the spec, Disc Priest getting nerfed this week will put the healers back on the same relative power level. Overall though, Holy Paladin is definitely the spec worth monitoring this week. And remember, Skill Capped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. We make this promise because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you should not pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking the link in the description. For now, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.